You may think of contact lenses as an alternative to wearing glasses, but there are many different types of contact lenses used for a variety of different reasons. In this episode of OcuTalk, we're talking with Dr. Elise Kramer about custom contact lenses and the important part they play in eye health and vision improvement. Dr. Kramer? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest coming to you from Miami Contact Lens Institute in Miami, Florida, Dr. Elise Kramer. Dr. Kramer, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, before we get started, Dr. Kramer, just wanted to kind of see if you could introduce yourself to us. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background and your specialty. Yeah, I'd love to. So I've been in practice since about uh, 2013. I graduated from the University of Montreal, so all in French uh, in Canada. And then uh, I did my, I, we have one external rotation. I did that here in Miami. And while I was here, I was applying for residency. I ended up doing residency through the Miami VA, which included time at the Baskin Palmer Eye Institute. And I specialize in ocular disease and ended up working um, with a lot of dry eye, uh, contact lenses, and I decided to open a specialty practice when I finished, um, which has been around since 2013. Um, and now we have two locations, so it's awesome. And we're just basically helping patients with specialty lenses, dry eye, myopia management. Um, pretty much that's what we do all day. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Kramer. And uh, you talked a little bit about contact lenses, and I know that uh, contact lenses can be used in, as an alternative to glasses. Um, however, there are many different types of contact lenses that are used for many different purposes. So I was wondering if you can at least tell us about uh, the different contact lenses that are available at the Miami Contact Lens Institute. Yeah, so we, you know, there's a, a, so many different eye shapes out there. And what I like to compare it to a little bit is um, like a feet, actually. It sounds weird, but let's say you go to a department store and you want to get a pair of shoes. Well, 85% of people can just do that. They can go to a department store and get shoes and they fit on, they can wear them all day. But there are some people who fall out of the, the regular bell curve. And so in addition to offering, you know, just regular disposable lenses, we also offer specialty lenses, which means we custom design them. And those range from custom design soft lenses. We do custom design hybrid lenses, corneal rigid gas permeable lenses, and scleral lenses. Probably the type of lens that we do the most um, in, in terms of specialty lenses is the scleral lens um, because it, it's so customizable and we have a lot of fun with that and we have a lot of advanced technology but we do offer all of them. And it's really, it really depends on the case. It depends on the patient. Sometimes it's personal preference and sometimes it just works better in some patients than others, so. Well, that's awesome. I, I've never heard the analogy between feet and eyes. Now, now I'll think about it in a different way. That, that's, a, that, that's, very, that's very interesting. Uh, doctor, can you tell us a little bit about some of the conditions you regularly see that can benefit from uh, custom contact lenses? Yeah, I mean, there are so many, again, but probably the most common specialty type of uh, condition would be keratoconus. And though that because it's such a common condition and they do so well with custom, like rigid gas permeable lenses, whether scleral or corneal, that um, that's probably the one I see the most of. But of course, patients with dry eyes, um, patients with like just very high prescriptions, whether it's astigmatism, hyperopia, myopia, uh, patients with um, corneal transplants uh, or previous surgery, scarring, anything like that. Fascinating. Uh, and Dr. Kramer, I was hoping that maybe you can explain to our audience a little bit further about orthokeratology or ortho-K as it's, uh, as it's kind of commonly referred to as and how it works. Yeah, so uh, ortho K is, and here's another analogy for you, that's kind of like uh, orthodontry for your eyes. So it's something that you wear at night um, and that uh, changes the shape or it straightens out um, your eyes if you want to take the term literally. 
Um, and basically what it does is it gently reshapes the front surface of the cornea while you're sleeping. And then you remove it in the morning. And the idea is that you see well all day without glasses or contacts, but an additional benefit. And I think one of the best uh, uses of orthokeratology is actually to slow down progressive myopia in children. And that's been shown time and time again, several studies, um, and it works really well. And, and obviously, you know, I think one of the main benefits of doing that in kids is that they don't have to worry about glasses or contacts during the day. So, but it also works really well in patients, you know, adult patients who have dry eyes, they don't have to have a contact lens during the day or, or something, you know, to think about and just do it at night while they're sleeping. So, wow. Uh, you're dropping so many analogies today. I'm learning so much about it. So that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Uh, Dr. Kramer, I know you, you create custom contact lenses and I'm so, just so fascinated by the process of how, how do you go about the process of like just fitting and, and designing uh, custom contact lenses? I was hoping you can kind of explain it a little further. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people are intimidated by it because they feel like they need all this fancy equipment. And obviously the fancy equipment is great to have. But I didn't have that when I first started, honestly. I just had like a fit set, uh, a slit lamp, and an auto refractor. So that's really sad, you know, from a specialty contact lens perspective, but it's doable. And I think that's what's important is that if you if you practice and you and you use whatever you have available, you can actually do it. Um, but the process can be done empirically, which means that you just take patient data and you call the lab and work with them to come up with a design, or you fit them in your office using trial lenses. And probably the second one, the trial lens process is a little bit more exact because you are trying it on in the office and you see what's going on, but empirical fits work really well too. So I think um, either one of those, and obviously it depends on the type of lens you're fitting. For example, orthokeratology might be better with in, done empirically, whereas scleral lenses do a lot better when you fit them in the office. Um, but either way, um, you end up with the same result. And sometimes it does require the patient to come back for several visits, which is fine, but ultimately what you're trying to do is just get the patient to be comfortable with good vision. And like I said, you can start empirically or by fitting them in your office. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Kramer. I appreciate that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so do you see many patients that are looking for custom contact lenses? Yeah. And some patients come from other doctors um, who, let's say, don't have the desire or resources to do it themselves. Um, and some patients find me online because, you know, people are really good at looking stuff up now and they go on Google and they type in, you know, keratoconus or they type in actually like, uh, let's say colored contact lenses and they want to get something a little bit more customized. So people look it up and they find you because, you know, if you have some information on your website or whatever, uh, they will find you. So people come from all over the place for that. That, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, I, I looked up a, a bunch of like just the, the lenses that you guys do. And uh, besides looking totally awesome and totally cool, like what are the benefits of having a cosmetic lenses? Uh, so there's a lot of benefits. There could be therapeutic benefits and ultimately psychological benefits, I think, is probably the main goal. You know, like you can colored lenses vary from like acting and music videos to literally like helping someone get through the day because they can't um, see without, without it. So um, in the cases of like severe, you know, let's say some people might do it for pure cosmetic reasons. So let's say they have like one eye that's white and the other one looks normal. They want them to match, but um, some patients have severe like light sensitivity or they have double in which case we design a lens for them to uh, reduce the amount of light coming in or completely block it. And that helps those patients, like I mentioned, get through the day. But you can imagine how even a patient who doesn't have light sense, let's say they're blind in the eye, but it just doesn't look normal, just to like for them to get a normal job or for them to, you know, have feel normal and like everyone else, um, 
they might want to change the appearance of their eyes. So there's a lot of benefits. And ultimately, what you're doing is finding them a therapeutic or psychological benefit. Um, but of course, you know, Halloween and, and different that you can use that just for fun. Uh, and the important thing about those type of colored lenses is that they're fit by an eye care practitioner and not just bought like from a corner store because um, every eye, and I mentioned this, every eye is completely different and with every eye needs to be fit um, for a special lens and not just, you know, dispensed or sold contact lenses. Gotcha. Well, that's great to hear. And uh, I know that we've talked about uh, dry eye and you've talked about helping patients just kind of get through the day sometimes. Uh, can you kind of explain the relationship between contact lenses and dry eye for our viewers? Sure. So it depends on the lens, you know, like we, you, t you mentioned like how many different lenses there are. And some lenses can actually make dry eye worse, so exacerbate it. And some lenses can be used to treat dry eye. So it really depends on the type of lens, the type of dry eye the patient has. Um, but for example, like uh, a contact lens is a foreign body. So if a patient already has dry eye, then theoretically introducing a to that uh, that um, that just environment can actually make it worse. But in certain cases, the so uh, soft lens could act like a bandaid and actually protect the surface of the eye from mechanical friction of the, um, the eyelids and whatnot. But usually for a patient um, with severe dry eye or even moderate dry eye, and, and this has been talked about in the uh, TFOS do's study, the second one, talking about scleral lenses and how they can help treat and also correct vision in patients with dry eye. What the scleral lens does is it provides a fluid reservoir between the lens and the surface of the eye, which can hydrate the eye while it's being worn. And it can also help heal the eye, restore the ocular surface. And some patients, actually a lot of patients with severe or even moderate dry eye have visual fluctuations. And this can be resolved using a, a contact lens that's stable and that provides a fluid reservoir. So there's a lot of different lenses that can be used in dry eye, but I think the scleral lens is definitely the best one. Definitely learning a lot about lenses today, and it's it's amazing. And uh, I, I know, and we talked about uh, earlier in your in your response, you talked about uh, the environment being a factor. Are there any other like factors that people should be looking out for, like to the, anything that they need to be aware of? Well, I think having like a, a fan over your bed at night is one of the <laughs> biggest causes of dry eye it sounds weird but it's so true it's it's just those fans can really dry out the ocular surface and some people actually sleep with their eyes a little bit open uh so that can make it worse having allergies just kind of adds on to dry eye so if you've allergies and you've got pollen in that area then and you have dry eye then that just makes it worse um you know in dry climates it helps to have like humidifier um, drinking water, things like that. But, um, you know, I think there, there are some medications that can cause dryness that can increase dryness, uh, sleep apnea, the thing, the CPAP can sometimes mm -hmm. contribute to dryness, but there's a lot of different factors and it really depends where you are in the world and what you have in your environment, you know? Gotcha. Absolutely. And, um, as far as dry eye is concerned, when you see a, a, a contact lens patient who has dry eye, um, what do you typically recommend to them as far as like a treatment option? Yeah. So I think that I'm super pro contact lens. I try to get everyone in contact lens. I wear a contact lens myself and we have a contact lens institute. So that's our goal is to find a contact lens that the patient can tolerate and be happy with, comfortable with, um, and see well with. Um, and so to do that, you have to optimize the ocular surface and you have to make the ocular surface like a nice place to put a contact lens so that they can be comfortable. It's not just up to the contact lens design. Obviously there's many designs There's some with higher water content, lower water content, you know, and you can pick and choose there. But if your ocular surface is not optimized and it's not um, ready to receive a contact lens, then you won't be successful. And so in order to be successful with any type of contact lens, you want to, again, optimize 
optimize the ocular surface. And the best way to do that is to find the underlying cause of what the dry eye is. There's two types of dry eye. And one is that you're not producing enough tears, so the quantity. And then the other type of dry eye is that the tears evaporate too quickly. And that's the quality. And, and very much, it's a mixture of both very often. And so after you identify using different tests in the office, what type of dry eye it is, you can treat it. And most of the time there is an evaporative component, in which case I do recommend eyelid hygiene. I think that's a big one. Um, you know, omega-3 um, and a warm compress, you know, in addition to some treatments that we offer in the office, which are focused on, you know, my bombing gland, uh, hygiene, my bombing gland health. Um, and then, um, and then artificial tears, you know, preservative free artificial tears can help as well as supplement, uh, complement, you know, a lot of the treatments that are being done. Well, you heard it from Dr. Kramer folks, you need to hydrate those eyes and use our artificial tears. Uh, we, we know something about that, I guess, <laughs> but anyway, um, Dr. Kramer, I, I just wanted to ask you, are, are there any like new technologies or uh, anything uh, that's going on as far as treatment options that we should be aware of? Yeah. So I think that, uh, I, I touched a little bit on, uh, in office treatment. Um, and so I know you guys have a great device that's available, uh, that you can do in the office just to heat up the myobomian glands, actually the upper and lower eyelids where the myobomian glands are. So those treatments are amazing because they allow to kind of vent a myobomian gland loss, um, and help them kind of restore their function. And so we always offer treatments like that in the office. And in addition to that, as I mentioned, warm compress. So that's a device that you microwave. Uh, or heat it up and then put it over the eyes for five to 10 minutes. I usually recommend that about twice a day. Lid hygiene, so sprays, wipes, different things like that, um, <clears throat> just to get the bacteria out. And that also can help with Demodex. So those are like key, key components. And then obviously there's always new eye drops being developed. And a lot of these eye drops can help um, prevent inflammation. They can help... Uh, kind of treat inflammation that's going on because of dry eyes. So I, I encourage those um, listeners to just find out from their eye care practitioner what eye drops are available and what eye drops would be suitable for them as well. well excellent information, Dr. Kramer. Thank you again. And uh, before we, we leave here, was there anything else that you wanted to tell our audience about? Uh, no, I mean, I, I'm excited to be able to share this information with you. And I think, I, I think if you know, this year has been like just very hard for everyone. A lot of people are working from home. Um, and I think a lot of people are spending time on screens on digital devices, and that can actually exacerbate or just dry eye. It's called digital eye strain. And we're seeing it now even in kids. And I think that that needs to be taken care of now more than ever, because it's just so common. And some things that you can do just like, um, just without even buying any products or doing anything special is just take breaks. A lot of the time uh, we forget to blink. It sounds weird. You're supposed to blink about 12 to 15 times a minute. And um, when you're really focused on something on a screen, you only blink about two to three times a minute. And that can cause what I uh, call digital eye strain. And so if you just take a, we call it 20, 20, 20. So if you just take a 20, second break every 20 minutes and look 20 feet away, you can help manage this and prevent dryness because by the time your eyes get dry, it's, it's a long way to get it back to the way it was before. So just try to take more breaks and um, remember to visit your eye care practitioner. Fantastic. Take more breaks. Uh, don't forget to blink. Dr. Kramer said so. <laughs> anyway, Dr. Kramer, thank you so much for joining us. Again, everyone, go see Dr. Elise Kramer at the Miami Contact Lens Institute in Miami, Florida. Dr. Kramer, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Take care.